da 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 Lee, your need of some refuses to be categorized. The podcast. My love beams, I am so thrilled to share with you that I've made a new thing for you. If you go to leonidawson.com forward slash tools, you are going to find my brand new resource page, which I am going to update and add to um, as things change. But there I am going to keep like a, a compendium, a Rolodex of the tools of the trade in terms of the software, the art supplies and the tech um, that I've used in my businesses uh, to build my businesses and generate over $11 million in revenue. So um, if you want to find the pictures to all the things that I'm going to be talking about and the links to where to find them, all that kind of stuff, go to leonidawson.com forward slash tools. So before we begin, I just want you to know that none of what I'm going to talk about is actually required to create success because what's required really is what's inside you. Courage, determination, fortitude and the willingness to learn and experiment. That's the stuff that actually creates success, not like the newest fandangled fucking plugin or whatever. The tools are replaceable, you are not. So this is just a list of what I use. And as you'll discover, I don't actually always use top of the line stuff. I just use what works for me and what keeps me creating. So that's the most important thing of all. It's your attitude. Um, It's not the tools that create success. Now, having said that, let us carry on. Now, first, let's talk about tech. What's the, what shit do I use in order to run my businesses? So First up, laptops. I have a particular obsession with MacBook Air laptops, specifically, wait for it, the older version. So I am talking 2017 and earlier because they have a smaller trackpad and they had a different keyboard. They brought out a new quick keyboard like 2018 onwards. I fucking hate it and it gives me RSI and the placement of a large trackpad makes my wrist go wonky. It gives me a lot of pain. So I personally just love this very specific laptop. Um, I love the MacBook Air um, because it's so thin. It doesn't raise up. It doesn't have that beveled edge, which kind of can cut into your wrist. And um, that for me creates a lot of RSI pain. Um, So, you know, if you're like, but Leonie, there's plenty of other things. If you don't go MacBook Air, that's great. But that I have tried every single laptop under the sun on the market and I always try out new ones and they don't have that edge down to as flat as the MacBook Air does. So that's what I really, really need. Um, so I still use my 2014 MacBook Air laptop daily and um, I actually got really concerned at one point that it was going to die because it's from 2014. Um, At one point I needed to get the battery replaced on it and I was thinking like, holy shit, what am I going to do? I am a writer and I can't use a tool if it damages me. And um, I went and talked to our local local computer dealer, which is a Harvey Norman um, and which is just a basic bitch white goods store (laughs) tech goods store we don't really have any options here where I live and that's okay Um, it is what it is anyway I went in and talked to them about it and they were like "Um, we actually still have stock like brand new stock of the 2017 laptop they've never been opened they've just been sitting in our tech warehouse for three years you actually can buy them from us and I was like shut up and take my money so I didn't get a massive good deal on it or anything. Like it wasn't that much cheaper than buying a brand new model, but it was 1000% worth it to me to buy one <laughs> um, in order to secure my supply. So I now have two that I go between. Honestly, I don't need to. It's just an overkill. Um, 
and but I, yeah, I'm just got one as a backup in case um, the other one dies because I don't know what I'm gonna do without my very specific MacBook Air. Um, I have heard from other entrepreneurs like exactly the same issue in that they had a MacBook Air, they absolutely loved it, they um, upgraded to the newer version and hated the keyboard, hated the new um, large size trackpad and it was making things a lot more difficult. Um, and to them I say go talk to your local computer dealer and see if you can get an older version. And I tell you, like nothing made me feel so rich as consciously buying something that was three years old just because I liked it. I actually feel like a little bit guilty about it. And my husband's like, honey, you're a writer. Like writers have all kinds of weird habits. Like, you know, there's some people that only like to write on one kind of old typewriter. Like that's much more like intense than what you're doing. Some only like to write on one specific kind of paper. It's fine. You are allowed to be a bit eccentric and what you use, especially since things give you a lot of pain if you don't. So there you go. Uh, that is what I use for my laptops. Now in terms of my phone, my phones tend to last me for years before I hand them down to my husband. Um, we just don't see the point in keeping up with new releases unless they're game-changing features or I fucked my old phone irrevocably, which I have done by using it to the ground, um, you know, dropping it. <laughs> um, we do use Apple iPhones um, and specifically I uh, have the Apple 11 Pro Max. Um, they've got the 12 Pro Max out now. The 11 Pro Max is larger and um, which is great because I have quite quite bad eyesight. Um, not that I really look at my phone that much anymore. Um, but I really love the cameras on the back. So um, the Pro Max versions have um, three cameras at the rear um, and it enables you to capture in portrait mode quite beautifully and this, the quality of the lens is quite beautiful. So I buy it basically so it's just a mobile camera um, which with decent like photo capacities. Righto, so that's how I do on the phone and that one, like I've got the 11 Pro Max, so I probably won't buy another phone for five years or more, um, we'll, and, unless I break it. <laughs> um, or unless my husband's phone breaks and so therefore he gets the downgrade, like I give him mine and I get the new phone. <laughs> Oh, bless. Uh, my husband like gives even less of a shit about phones than I do. So um, it's just like a revolve. It goes down, down with, bless him. He always lets me get the new one. Um, we also have a big A3 brother printer scanner unit. Um, and I'll be honest, like it's it's been fun to have it. But I don't know if I'd bother buying that size again because the A3 is like the double size. And I originally bought it so I could scan in artworks that were bigger than A4 sized. But I haven't really needed to do that in years. And most of my artwork is now created digitally. So I don't need to do that really large kind of scale, um, large scale scanning kind of process. Um, it's fun to have a printer though. Uh, I've had both Brother and Epson printers. Uh, I think both are good, really. I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, right, let's talk about iPads. So lots of people ask me about how I do the digital illustration stuff and I fell in love with digital illustration back in 2020 and um, I had like just a standard iPad and I was like, oh my God, I'm so in love um, with this whole digital illustration thing. You know what I should do? I should upgrade to one of those really big motherfucker 12.9 inch iPad Pros. Um, but, dot, 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 and this is going to make me sound very wasteful, but it is what it is. I actually found the large iPad Pro too large and cumbersome to use it constantly, um, especially given my RSI, um, the weight was actually just a bit too much my hands for me to be able to draw and write on easily and usually. So now I just use it for bigger book design projects um, and use my 10.2 inch 
iPad, just the basic beach version. And I use that like 95% of the time because it's portable, it's easy, it's just light, it's fucking fun. So if you're thinking about digital illustration, honestly, just a standard iPad is great. It's fucking great. Now, if you are at all interested in doing digital art or illustration, take my advice and skip all of those lackluster, bodgy tablet styluses. I bought all of them. And I did not fall in love with digital creativity until I had an Apple Pencil. They are made for making stuff with the iPads, like the sensitivity, the compatibility, the pressure, all of it divine. And again, because I bought the iPad Pro, um, I have both the Apple Pen and the Apple Pen 2. And I actually just prefer the plain old Apple Pen. I am indeed a basic bitch. But like the Apple Pen just works brilliantly. And like the Apple Pen 2, fine, but I don't like the extra features on it. Just a plain basic bitch iPad and Apple Pen is fucking phenomenal. Um, in terms, I was talking to my husband actually yesterday about the I like the big iPad Pro that I've got because I feel like, oh, you know, I feel bad that I don't use it all the time. I only use it for big design projects. And he's like, honey, that's fine. Like you do do like design projects quite a lot. Um, and, you know, the kids, my kids are getting older and they're going to need things you know, like they'll probably get more into digital, digital illustration, so that'll be fun for them. And I also have the Magic Keyboard that attaches to the iPad Pro. Haven't really used it because I'm just really like my laptops. Um, but my husband's like, one of our kids can use that in their room really easy as kind of like a, you know, simple laptop. Um, and I was like, ah, oh, well, that makes me feel better. So anyway, that's how <laughs> that's how I go through that. Sure, I can sell it and stuff like that, but um, yeah, there's st- I, I still need to use it for certain projects. Um, okay, what else? Oh, okay, microphones. So I'll be honest, like I've bought a lot of fancy microphones over the years, and I've been so frustrated by the trickiness of getting them all set up each time. And I'll just be like, fuck it, I'm just not going to use it at all because it's just too annoying to get set up. So the ones that I end up using over and over again is just HyperX gaming headphones that my husband bought for me and him in a two for one deal. And they just make it really easy for me to just create. So me recording this right now, I am recording it onto my microphone headset, um, which costs like less than a hundred bucks. And it is um, plugged into my iPad. I use the Anchor um, FM podcast app to record things. Simple, done. It's like easy peasy. Uh, Plus you always know as well that like I'm very happy to record podcasts without any fucking microphones either. Um, When I'm recording webinars, when I'm doing podcast interviews on other people's podcasts, uh, I will use these and it's good. Like the sound quality is fine. I'm sure you can get like more amazing sound quality, but that would mean I wouldn't use it because it's too annoying for me to set up. So whatever makes it easy for me to create, I am happy with that. And I love the fact with this, like it can just like sit around on the couch as, like, and the kids can put them on and use them as headphones or whatever. It doesn't really matter. And I can just pick them up, throw on my head and ba-bam, the microphone works. Yay. Nice. Okay. What else do I use? Kindle. I do about 90% of my book reading on Kindle Paperwhite now. And I like that it's backlit for reading at night and waterproof for reading in the bath. And that I can just kind of shuffle around with thousands of books <laughs> with me at a time. The, like the inner book reader in me really likes that feature. Plus, uh, I now also collate all of my book highlights and notes as I'm reading books onto Goodreads and then use that as kind of my own personal research refidex resource kind of thing. I just have the Wi-Fi version, not the cellular cellular version. Just like with iPads, I just go the Wi-Fi version because I'm not, (laughs) it's not like I really leave the house. And even if I am, um, I don't really need the internet on my iPad or the Kindle. I can just preload stuff. Um, And also I should say that I think in America you can get ad supported Kindle versions. 
the idea of that just makes me vom in my throat. Like, do not disturb my reading time with fucking ads. I don't want to know about the outside world. <laughs> Uh, what else? Oh, yes. I always decorate my laptops with skins from Society6. And skins are like a colorful vinyl sticker that decorates kind of the top of your laptop. And sometimes I'll make my own design and get that printed to amuse myself. And sometimes I buy from all the other artists on there because independent artists will st sell their designs on Society6. Um, and there's just so many fucking scrumptious ones. And they are removable. I have pulled them off before. Um, I had one that was on there for years and I pulled it off. Um, and it had a little bit of like a slight gray stickiness from the edges. And I just used like a little bit of eucalyptus oil or lemon oil on a tissue and it just wiped off straight away. And then I put a new skin on. Yay! Uh, what else? Oh, laptop bag. So for years, I used like a calico shopping bag or an oversized handbag as my mobile office to shove my laptop, my iPad, journal and Kindle in. But then middle-aged truck and my shoulders were like, fuck you, creative pack rat, you are bodging me up. So I acquiesced to their demands and got myself a sensible Bondi backpack from Wanderers, Wanderers Travel Co. Um, I do hope it kind of makes me look more like an intrepid but stylish traveler than a teenage schoolgirl. But either way, my shoulders have stopped <laughs> yelling at me so much. So that is what I call a win. Noise. All right, software. Let's talk about what software I use. First and foremost, I use Kajabi for most things in my business, like selling through their shopping cart, teaching my courses through their learning management system, and running my affiliate program. I used to send, I used to use Kajabi to send all of my marketing emails as well, but their send rates went completely bogged, and it made me very fucking cross. I totally wish I could use it for marketing emails still because it makes things so much easier and simpler to have it all in one system. Still, you know, what they do do with like the, the learning management system is still bloody brilliant. So all my courses are still hosted on there as well as a bunch of other parts of our business. In terms of who I use to send our marketing emails, I now use Active Campaign. The pros with Active Campaign is they have really good email deliverability rates. They do have good customer service. The cons are they can be eye-wateringly expensive. And they insist on putting a logo on all email opt-in forms unless they charge you double the eye-watering amount, which kind of shits me. So in related news, I think I need some fucking therapy about email deliverability <laughs> providers. I must say, like, the whole Kajabi switch to active campaigns only happened in the last, like, two months, and so I still feel cross about it. <laughs> so, at some point, I'll forget just that I'm cross about this whole, like, email deliverability situation having to change <laughs> to somebody new who doesn't do it in quite the way that I would like. So, uh, that's where I'm at with that. Full disclosure, the Scorpio finds it hard to forgive. Um... And honestly, sometimes I just fucking long for the days when something like a male chimp was enough. Now, here's the thing, like when you're just starting out in business, like active campaign may not necessarily be the right choice for you. Um, Kajabi might not be the right choice for you. There's like so many um, options out there. I'm just going to share with you what I currently use. What else? We use the full Google suite of products um, in our businesses, including email, including having our domain name branded emails forwarded through them. So for example, if you email support at leonidawson.com and get an email from back from us, that is through the Gmail interface. Uh, we also use Google Drive for storing all our company files, photographs, book designs, website designs, paperwork, etc. Just all of our company files are on there. Um, Google Docs, Sheets and Slides for creating documents, spreadsheets and slideshows. And I love that it's cloud-based so that I can work on the same document as my assistant at the same time and never have to worry about a computer crashing and losing important data and all that kind of stuff. So in terms of what I use to generate a website, um, I could use Kajabi's website features. They have that 
functionality. However, I have been blogging since 2004 and I have thousands and thousands of blog posts in my archives. Um, that is not something that I can easily uh, transfer to Kajabi. Um, and probably not necessarily something I'd want to do at this point anyway, just because of the way it's set up with search engine optimization. Um, now, if I was starting a website today, would I use WordPress? Probably not. It's powerful, but geeky and not super easy to use. If I was starting out, I probably use something like Wix or Squarespace instead. Um, but WordPress is where I'm at and, you know, it's, it's good. It's powerful. It's just complicated pain in the ass. Speaking of it being a complicated pain in the ass, if you are going to use WordPress, do make sure that you're using a WordPress plugin like Divi, D-I-V-I, so that you can do plug and play website designs with templates. That makes it a lot easier. Um, I also host my WordPress websites on WP Engine because they're very secure and very fast. We made the shift to WP Engine because they have such strong security measures and they manage the constant WordPress updates. And so far we've been really happy with them. Um, they are pricier than just a basic bitch um, hosting server though. Like I've used heaps. Like I think I started maybe with like Bluehost or something because it was $6 a month and I was like, yes. <laughs> so you don't need to do enormous outlays in the beginning. Um, like I definitely was just bootstrapping and just to make it as affordable as possible. And I still want things to be affordable, but now I have to like work out, okay, is this the right choice or would it create more money if I did something like this? Okay. Uh, accounting and financial management system, I use Xero, that's X-E-R-O. It's about a thousand times easier to find angle than like other accounting systems I've used before. Uh, plus, I really love that it's cloud-based. So my accountants who are in Canberra, where we used to live, and I love them so much that we kept them, uh, so they can still work on our accounts and then I can easily check on reports when I need to. If you've got an accountant or a bookkeeper, I'd recommend checking with them what software they prefer using with clients because some of them really love Xero, some of them like other cloud-based options out there and it's always best to use the one that they like to use. Okay, Canva. My assistant and I use Canva all the time to create new graphics for everything in my business. I love that they make design so much more accessible for small business owners. You can use it for free and they have some really great templates and layouts as well. Plus, I just think it's super fucking sexy that it's helped make one of its founders the third richest woman in Australia. And before Canva came up out, really, like your option was to was Photoshop and Photoshop is super expensive and very complicated to learn how to use really. Um, and it doesn't come with all those templates or the stock photos or anything. Canva is a brilliant idea um, and I just think they're kicking ass really. Now I also use uh, something called opt-in monster to create all of the pop-ups and reminder windows and lead magnet forms on my website. It's definitely made an increase in adding new people to my mailing list and increasing sales as well. So that's pretty fucking cool. Uh, now, if you're wanting to know what I use on my iPad, Procreate is the iPad I use to do digital illustration. It is blindingly good and used by most professional illustrators and it's simple enough to use it. My kids like love using it too. Uh, GoodNotes is the iPad app that I use for taking handwritten and illustrated notes, signing documents and annotating and studying PDFs. It's brilliant. Sometimes people like balk at the GoodNotes like $10 price tag or whatever. Um, I don't even know how much the Procreate app pro, um, tag was. It must be like 10 bucks, 20 bucks. I don't know. Look, Procreate and GoodNotes are so fucking great. If they cost you 10 bucks, I swear to God, it's worth it um, because I spend way less on stationery now that I've got good notes <laughs> because like, you know, I just buy myself like little journals all the time and I, like I still do buy some journals, but um, good notes, it's like you get to have all of the unlimited journals under the sun. It's just so great. 
Okay, last piece of software to share with you is, um, even though I did just bitch about Adobe, uh, I do still use Adobe Photoshop for editing photos and Adobe InDesign for laying out my goal planners for print. Um, just like they are so robust and intense uh, and I've been using them for decades now. So um, I'm, it's kind of like second nature to me, but there's definitely that learning curve there. Uh, I also use Illustrator. Well, I used to use Illustrator really for cleaning up my pen on paper drawings, but now most of the time I do with them digitally now, so I don't really use Adobe Illustrator as much. What I do like is that um, with Adobe, instead of buying the software now, you can effectively rent it monthly. And so, ho, 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 here's my pro tip. Because I only need InDesign like maybe two months of the year, I just do a monthly package and just sign up for those two months of the year. Um, and with Adobe Photoshop, you can get like a photographer package and it's like 14 bucks a month or so for Photoshop, I think. Um, and that's how I do that. <laughs> it is how I do that. All right. <sighs> Last but not least, art supplies. Oh my God, I feel like I'm talking about art supplies. So I have been using the same exact style of journal since I was 16 and I had an incredible high school art teacher, thank you Mr. Turia, who introduced us into the practice of keeping an art journal and um, you know he ordered in these art journals for everyone to have and use and it's a cheap A4 sized hardbound journal with blank pages and it really just serves as a place to experiment and record inspirations and develop you know a room of one's own and I like that it's you know kind of cheap because it never really feels like I'm wasting anything and I've been drawing and collaging and painting and taking notes and writing in these since the dawn of time, 1999. <laughs> and I will continue to until the end of time. They are my special place. And whatever kind of journal you end up using, I hope it becomes your special place too. I just really love like the heart that that, that same journal, the Montmartre sketching journal, uh, because it's it's big, you know, in terms of it being A4 size, it's hardcover, it's durable, and um, you can usually get them for about 10 bucks. And um, it's just such a, you can really kind of explore into it and it, be, it can become a room of one's own. Ugh, I love it. I love it so much. Uh, one of my favorite pens to use are Japanese Kuretake brush pens. Um, they are traditionally used for, you know, kind of Japanese calligraphy and um, art and even, you know, manga and comics. And they are kind of like drawing with a brush and paint, but it's a pen. And they honestly make writing and drawing look wildly artsy and you will 100% feel more artistic when using one of them. They're just brilliant. I usually end up buying them from Etsy and you can also find them, not Etsy, sorry, eBay. Um, sometimes I need to order direct from Japan um, and sometimes you can find them on Amazon, but a lot of art stores will stock them. It's Kuretake. Um, Posca pens, those beauties as you like you've probably heard about Posca pens they're like paint pens be still my beating heart those babies were totally the hot ticket item of my high school art room supply cupboard and they ended up just kind of like being this black market of them and because that's how delicious they are it still feels slightly thrilling and contraband to use them honestly <laughs> but I love that they kind of create this very um, matte and opaque uh, surface that you can draw and paint with. What else? Paints. Uh, I use Windsor and Newton watercolors. I lived out of a tiny um, set. I think they were called like a field set or whatever. They only had 12 um, 
little palettes in there and the cute thing about the Winsor & Newton ones is that you can just pull out the pans and add new ones in once they're empty or if you want to swap out different colors so I just swapped out a couple of the colors because I don't really use um, brown paint um, or white paint in my drawings um, I usually just kind of use rainbow colors like very jeweled colors and so I could buy like the tiny little pans of my favorite colors uh, and then I ended up lashing out and getting like the big mother of sets and I think I had like 120 or 140 pans in it and it's also great but honestly I still just like remain in love with the tiny one like if I had to choose between them I'd probably just go with the tiny one and maybe that's because of the history behind it in that I'm just really used to using them uh, gouache oh gouache I don't get why watercolor is more popular than gouache to be honest gouache is always my favorite to use out of the two even the cheapest shit under the set like the cheapest shit set under the sun it's great gouache is like watercolor but it's more intensified and more opaque with intensified colors and it's just scrummy and if you haven't tried using gouache before I really recommend it scrum diddle dedumptious uh, in terms of acrylic stuff I buy the cheapest shit under the Sun uh, because I don't ever want to feel like I'm wasting paint <laughs> Sometimes with like acrylic paint, I feel like you can, because you have to squirt so much out. I'm like, oh my God. Um, if it's pricey, I'm not going to feel as creative. Um, I like to be scabby with my art supplies. I like just to work with what I've got and enjoy it and um, not be afraid to use it. That's the most important thing. And last of all, uh, Uniball, I find pens. I've been using... The black pen version of those in my artworks for years actually because you can paint over them or you can go over the top of stuff and they're waterproof so for instance I would paint something in watercolor and then I would draw over it once it was dry um, with black pen or I would draw something in black pen and then once the pen was dry I could paint over it and it didn't like spill everywhere um, I also use the light blue version for writing in my daily journal um, when the pages are thick enough so it doesn't soak through because they are a little bit inky and sometimes I even like to go a little bit wild and get the purple one too <laughs> lifestyles of the rich and the famous you heard it here first wow we now if you've got a burning question about anything else I use let me know what you're interested in and I'll tell you what I use and I'll also add to this page leonidawson.com forward slash tools so you can always see what I'm using now now of course it is April you know what that means my prices are doubling at the end of this month for three of my most popular programs money manifesting in multiple streams of income 40 days to create and sell your e-course and 40 days to finish your book um, so if you are at all interested in creating your e-course writing a book or getting your money sorted and getting wildly abundant then uh, those are the courses for you they have had thousands and thousands of students through them now with rave results um, and many miraculous miracles created <laughs> miraculous miracles um, and honestly like I think it's testament to how good my e-courses are in that I have had people taking e-courses every one I've ever taken since 2008 they buy everything I ever made because they know it's going to be good um, and I love that so even if you've got one of the courses you should probably buy the rest because I promise you you're going to buy them at some point they're fucking awesome uh, leonidawson.com forward slash double make sure you get in before the end of the month because we like it's not getting extended after that you need to just buy now if you email in first to me and be like I'm so sorry I forgot we'll say I'm so sorry lovely but a boundary is a boundary and that's when it ended so please don't be that I just want you to do what you need to do go get the things if you need to get the things leonidawson.com forward slash double all right love you all I hope this is useful and if you've got any questions make sure you email us support at leonidawson.com okay bye